Welcome back to Tetra Cancer from Monoblock. This will be the first in a series of videos deconstructing this Porta 7 mini studio by Tascam. I'll take it to pieces so that if you have one of these and you need to clean the mixer, get some of the PCBs to solder them, change some belts, you've got a broken door and that needs changed, whatever it is, um, you've got some sort of reference material to look at when you're taking yours apart. I'm going to begin by taking off these knobs because they will need to come off for me to access the mixer later. So um, these faders, I have to use a thinner plastic tool here. I'm just using plastic tools so I don't mark the case. Like they come up, they come off from the front. I say don't mark the case. One of the downsides of this, this unit's pretty similar to 414 Mark II, which goes for crazy money, I think, because of um, the guy from Nine Inch Nails. This is actually a really similar machine. It's not as desirable partly because I don't want to wreck it further, but can you see that look, this rubberized surface, it doesn't age well. So it looks pretty mucky, but um, functionally it's a pretty similar unit. Anyway, um, the meter control comes off from the front. Come on, it come as does the DVX control. And there will be a separate video at some point where I go into the specifics of what this can and can't do, um, but that's not the purpose of this video, it's just to take the thing apart. I recently shot some footage taking apart a uh, Porta 05. These knobs are the same sort of style, they look similar, but actually uh, these these are smaller. Um, the the Port 05 caps are slightly wider and have a square position indicator which is situated on the opposite side relative to how this central bit sh fits onto the shaped pot shafts. So if you try and put a Port 05 knob on this, it'll turn the wrong way. You can see that they're transparent, the colouring comes from a sticker underneath. Um, watch out for this as well, you see there's little retainers that go inside these holes so when you turn that over they'll probably drop out so I'll probably um, take all of these out in a little bit and set them aside for later. In fact I'll go off screen and do the rest of that, come back when I'm finished. Oh last thing before I turn do that though, I'll just remove this pitch control. The only other switch is here, these gain control, input switches, monitor select switch, and uh, these um, bus select record arm um, buttons, they're all mounted from the rear once the case is open. You open the case by removing six screws like this from the rear. Um, they're sort of brassish colour, Phillips head on flange, I think that's called the flange. Uh, wide ferrule because it's plastic and we might post inside the location of them. It's the holes beside these uh, white bits of shielding tape that I've added so you can see clearly where they are if you freeze frame now. Uh, then your best opening from the back here. Now the connection between the two halves, this is your mixer printed circuit board and this is your record playback amplifier. Um, it's via ribbon cable so you can see I've already opened some of these, which I now regret. Um, I'll explain why in a second. Before I get to the transport here, I'm just going to say, if you possibly can, just deal with as much of it like this, with these two boards still connected. I will remove this, just for those of you who want to. There's a little plastic part. Try it up. It comes off like that. And then there are little metal clips inside which grip the metal pins and you can just use something small and thin like a pair of tweezers to one by one open those pins up. As you can see it's not that easy to get them out but I promise you it's a lot easier to get them out than it is to put them back in. You'll find you'll get intermittent connections, especially you can see these have become a bit damaged because I left them like that for a while, so that was a, a silly decision on my part. But you know, that's snapped off almost completely. Um, these ribbon cables are a lot more brittle than flexible cables like this. I'm probably going to have to 
cut these, retin them, restrip them, and I'm going to crimp on um, JST headers. Or maybe just um, solder that into the board, like uh, I've kind of snookered myself there. Don't put yourself in that position, L leave these three cables intact. Anyway, having said that, here's the transport. Um, apart from the appearance of these black plastic buttons, this is actually the same transport that appears in the 414 Mark II. I've already made a video about that, I'll link to it in the description, so if you need to see what kind of belts you know, sizes of belts required, how to change them. I cover that in detail in that video. I'll focus more here on just removing it from the chassis. So you can see that there are two um, points with earth cables on this side and two screws without earth cables on that side. Um, I've already written E for earth on those two tabs to remind myself on reconstruction that I need to get these little ring connectors back between that metal surface and the screw. The purpose of those is just so that um, everything has got a, a common ground, i.e. the negative side of everything is all joined together. That might not actually make any sense unless you do have a basic understanding of electronics. If you don't, don't worry about it. Keep watching my videos, watch other YouTubers, you'll get there eventually. I knew nothing about this stuff until I started doing it. So that's going to be physically free from the board. Now we need to um, disconnect the various cables and the motor and um, other sort of control functions going via this. We're only left with the um, cables running from the race and uh, playback and record heads here. So those wires are fairly delicate, so I wouldn't pull them out by the strength of their wire. I'd give them a bit of a wiggle with pit pliers until they come out. Um, you can see there's two white headers here, but they're uh, different lengths. These two are the same length, but they're red and white in colour, so you can remember how to reinsert them that way. There we go, so you can see there's one belt for the counter, a long one going from the capstan motor to this flywheel. The flywheel's got a little pulley underneath that's going to this and turning the wheel mechanism, but I, I you can get all of those belts usually from a generic kit for a few pounds, um, but I go into that, like I say, in more detail in the 414 Mark II video. So, imagining it again that this is still attached to those other boards, I would recommend you work in that way, but um, now we want to get at this mixer board to clean it. And there's a plastic board that goes around these sockets here that comes off. Now, I haven't got all of the screws in here, it's only partly reassembled. But what I've done here, the holes where there's a C beside it, so one, two, three, four places. They won't have screws in them uh, because they correspond to uh, mounting posts on the other half of the case. So the, the screws coming through that part of the case and into mounting posts through those holes. Make some sort of mental note to yourself and mark them as I have so that you don't end up putting screws into those holes when you reassemble it because that'll block you from shutting the case. I hope that makes sense. And then you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. This one has this little ring connector that's going to some shielding behind there. So I've written an E there. And just to make this video quick to film, I've only put two of these back in at that point, which will lift out. So for cleaning you can then remove the further five caps from these switches and uh, you can take these little plastic caps. Oh, are they, oh they're pretty stuck actually, I, won't, I don't want to damage them and it won't prevent the cleaning but there's these plastic caps and these two uh, game controls here. If you check my channel homepage I've got a playlist about cleaning Porter Studios and I demonstrate it on a 244 and on a... 
I think on a 424 Mark III um, the 424 Mark III electronics look a bit more like this board. Um, so if you want a detailed demonstration of that, refer to those videos. But a brief summary of what I would be doing is using a combination of contact cleaner, compressed air um, and lubricant. So put some uh, contact cleaner in, spray it around where the plastic shaft joins the metal. There's little holes where you can apply the contact cleaner and switches into the cavity of the faders and I'd blow that out compressed air maybe you do this a couple of times depending on how oxidized or dirty or dusty these uh, parts are and then finally I would apply some lubricant because if you're using a cheaper contact cleaner like Seversol 10 is very effective mid price one but it doesn't have a lubricant built into it you can get um, contact cleaners that have a lubricant in them but here in the UK where I live they're quite expensive it's usually cheaper if you're only going to do this once for one machine or for a couple of machines just to buy Serversal 10 and a, a little tube of mixer lube, cake deoxid mixer lube and apply that. And that should uh, sort out any intermittent issues you've got. You can um, rule dirt out of your list of suspects if you do still have um, any kind of electrical problems once you've reassembled the unit. Um, imagining you wanted to repair the door, replace it, um, maybe you had one of these um, arm hinges is broken and you want to glue that, spin weld it, and you would need to remove these two springs here. They're long loose springs like that. You fit them with the downward angle. Oh, you can see that's a slight downward angle down that way. Put them down into the case. And there's a little hole for a mounting pin up at the top there and then screw back in when you're reassembling. With those removed, open the door as wide as it'll go and then you should be able to just push these in slightly. Well that's a bit dark but hopefully you can see roughly what I was doing and then that'll come out the front. The shielding at the front of the mixer, um, it's not glued or anything, it just slides over the mounting posts. And beneath that we have this um, dust catch sort of felt material that um, prevents too much dust getting into the feeder cavities. And we've got this mechanical contraption here, and it's basically a way for the user to manipulate controls on the top surface that are actually switching three-way switches that are mounted to the lower of the two PCBs and not the higher. So that creates a bit of an issue on reassembly. Be aware that um, these switches must line up with these um, mechanical contraptions when you reassemble it. So I find the best way to do that is put both switches into the down position put these into the down position when you lower that back on when you're rebuilding it and make sure that you can feel and hear that the switch is beneath being clicked when you move that before you start tightening up any screws. I'm not exactly sure why you would want to remove this. These are bespoke parts so you'd be kind of stuffed if you lost them but if for some reason I can't anticipate you do need to take them off you just remove these screws. Oh, I beg your pardon, um, I said that those wouldn't remove from the front, they do remove from the front, but it's probably as well that I didn't, because then these central parts would drop out. You can see that they just slot in here and then pull down. So I don't know, maybe you got dust or liquid in or something in there and you needed to clean it. That's that part of the case then, clear then. Moving on to the lower part of the case, let's have a look at how we would get access to the underneath of this uh, board. In my case, I already featured this board in a short video about capacitors and how to spot when they're broken. This one's obviously, sorry, the autofocus isn't working very well, but you see how that's sticking out? There's actually, there's actually a gap where I can actually get under there that capacitor stuff so I, I do actually need to get to underneath this and replace that capacitor but you know whatever your electrical issue is with this then we've got some screws to remove one here 
here. You can see I've been here before and done most of this and I've drawn little arrows with a Sharpie pen here. One here, I'm not quite sure why I haven't drawn an arrow there. One there, one there. This is the only one in the centre. Let's find out if I take that out. And this is the one that I left in. We would want to, I think, take that, the end off that power button and then it will come out. I think that will just pull off with a pair of pliers and push the button in. That will give us enough clearance to get a board out. Yeah, then that left side. You can see there's uh, another piece of shielding here. It will be um, foiled on the other side. It's probably held down with um, double-sided tape. You could replace that if you needed to lift this up for some reasons. So you've got a liquid spill or something in there. But then that's going to give you access to everything you need. There's one bit of foam there. Note that. Maybe it's missing on yours or it's come off. You'd want to glue it back. Presumably there's some chance of... Uh, there's that. That's beside the um, this extender for this button. Um, so maybe that's to absorb pressure from that button. I'll go off screen, get it reassembled, tested. I'll be replacing that capacitor. There may be more issues around this power input area because this capacitor is gone. Maybe that's the subject of another video, but that's the end of this deconstruction video. Thank you for watching.